Well, once again, Fox 8 is your local election headquarters, and it is already here. Early voting, it starts tomorrow, February 15th, and goes through March the 2nd for this year's North Carolina primary, which will happen on Super Tuesday, March the 5th. North Carolina's election is stacked with big races. In addition to their presidential preference, voters will choose a new governor, lieutenant governor, local judges, and the people who will lead their school districts. Fox 8's Cassie Fambro checked in with County Elections Director Charlie Collicutt about what you need to know before you vote. Cassie. Yeah, Natalie and Neil, one of the newer challenges is making sure you have a valid ID before you go to cast your ballot, but there are some rules to know for seniors or those who maybe don't drive and ways that you can get a free ID. Anytime, any presidential year, um, we really do a lot. We have onboarded a lot of people to help work for early voting for election day. Guilford County Elections Director Charlie Collicutt says every four years, voting locations see an influx of people casting a ballot. There's a presidential election on the line, and this year, North Carolina will elect a new governor, lieutenant governor, and a slew of congressmen and women. Turnout can vary in primaries, but we're going to be prepared with our personnel. Those planning on voting need to carry a valid form of ID. A driver's license, a student ID for some schools, a passport will work. The photo IDs that we give out here at our Board of Elections office, uh, veterans IDs. Just move to North Carolina and want to vote? Out-of-state driver's licenses can be okay if you've been registered with us for less than 90 days. Just looked at your driver's license and realized it's expired? The general rule for everybody is if it's been um, expired for less than a year, you can use it. If you're over 65 years old, there's another exception. If you are 65 or older, you can use an expired driver's license if it expired after you turn 65. Colleague Cut says they've worked hard over the past year to spread the word about needing a valid ID. We did do this ID process uh, in some of our uh, municipal elections back in 2023, and it seemed to go well. If all else fails and you can't find your ID, have a valid excuse for not having one, or maybe even you left it at the house before you went to a voting location. If you don't have one, if you don't know if you've got the right thing, come out and vote anyways. There is a process where voters that, that have a, a reasonable exception for not being able to present an ID, they can do a form or an affidavit that if they truthfully fill that out, we can still count a ballot for those voters. Now, if you want to be prepared and see a sample ballot or if you want to call and make sure that your ID will work, the best way to get more info is to visit your county's Board of Elections website where you can check, make sure you're registered, find out where to go again for each of your respective counties. Neil and Natalie.